Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do another fun painting, so let's get started. We'll start off today with our two inch brush and a little bit of yellow, maybe a touch of red, and of course some white. And right about here, just above half, half of the canvas here, I'm going to drop in a little bit of a sunset, just like this. Not a, not a whole lot of paint on the canvas today. As you know, that makes life a lot easier. We're gonna have a lot of beautiful colors in the sky today. So, oh, there's some red and that works out pretty well. Wipe the brush, add a little more yellow and watch this. You can blend and make a million colors on the canvas. You don't have to mix everything and make it perfect on the palette. There we go. Next, I'll load a nice soft blue gray color on the two inch brush. And this one I'll throw up here at the top and allow it to sort of work down, become a little bit softer as it comes down. Maybe I'll go a little darker at the top. That works. All right. Be careful, don't add too much paint or this is not gonna be fun in a minute. I'm gonna let it get quite a bit lighter over there so I'm not gonna put anything else over there for now. And let's see, that's probably about good enough. Change brushes, clean one. And I'm just going to melt everything together. I do not want a whole lot of paint down here. There. See that? Grab, grab this paint and bring it down. Next, I'll load our filbert brush with a nice soft peach color. And maybe right here, I just want to drop in a, a beautiful cloud or two. Maybe we'll add multiple colors to the clouds today. This is sort of the highlight first, just because when you're doing something like this, it's not a bad thing to do the highlight first. You can put the shadow around it. It's very, very easy to put a shadow over a light color. It's kind of tricky sometimes to, to get a beautiful soft color with yellows over a color that might have purple or something. The purple would just totally eat it up. So that's the reason. Nice. Just repeat this process till you have all the little highlights in. Now, as you can see, I have a basic sketch of a mountain and I've already begun to just fill it in. This is just a beautiful purple color, very soft color. And I like it. <laughs> it's gonna look nice with the sky, I think. You can see I decided to throw a couple of orange tones in the sky as well. Just felt like I it felt like it needed it. So it just sort of changes the overall feeling of the sky and see you don't sometimes your plans don't always work out sometimes you end up changing things as you go and that's just fine be a little bit flexible when you do this to have a better time now today we're going to be in a valley looking down so i've got maybe we'll do the sketching process together today i've got a bit of a got a bit of a river this feels so weird to me these perspectives because i've always tried not to get this kind of perspective there because if you're in a standard landscape where we had like rocks and stuff in the foreground here, then it would look like we were in a helicopter and it would be weird. But the idea is we're standing on another mountain looking down into a valley on top of all this. So yeah, it is kind of a helicopter view and that's okay. Okay, let's do some valleys here or a bit of a meadow maybe on top. This is fun, we don't normally sketch together. And then maybe a couple of tall trees right here. We'll figure those out later. Put some lines there to remind us what we're doing. Maybe we lose the river here. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> there we go. A loose basic sketch. And I'll just continue on with that mountain. Now let's drop on a bit of highlight to this mountain. And of course I'm gonna use the soft peach color just like I did in the sky. And if, I think we're even going to paint some evergreens with this color, so this is sort of the way the painting is going to be. A lot of this beautiful color, and I really like it. It's just a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red and white. Add the red slowly to your yellow and white, 
until you get just the right shade that you're happy with. That's all it is. There, and then once you have it, mix up a big pile of it and you can adjust it a little bit as you go. I think I'm gonna put a little more red into mine right now, just for fun. And let's see where that gets us. There. Change it up. You always want your paintings nice and, and loose and you got a whole bunch of different things happening. Variation in color is really one of the biggest secrets to making a detailed painting. Next, I'll load our filbert brush with a nice soft peach color. This time, maybe a little more yellow. There. And just gonna begin dropping in these beautiful trees. Just stick them right on. Today, we just have to paint in each little individual area. We're gonna do it very quickly though. So it really won't be too difficult at all. Now with our filbert brush, I have a very nice dark purple mix right here. And I'm gonna use this to, well, to paint in a few trees here. <laughs> now, this is gonna be kind of interesting because this is very bright and very, very sunlit, although the sun is super low on the horizon. And we've got this beautiful light coming through. Now these trees are gonna be in shadow. You see how certain areas are in shadow? Well, this is gonna be one of those areas, just very, very close. So we've got quite a few more trees to paint. There. Well, let's see, maybe that's, maybe that's not what we wanna do yet. Maybe we wanna just smudge in some color. Yeah, let's do this, smudge in some color. And then, after you have a bit of this color smudged in, then you sort of raise up your trees. This way you're not stuck painting a tree all the way down to the bottom of the canvas. That wouldn't make any sense at all. There we go. So you just tap your tree in and then it sort of meets up with the big blob of color and then you make another one. That's the most efficient way to do this. And as you can see, I did leave a lot of beautiful shadows over here. It's maybe a bit, a bit of a, a meadow and then it kind of rolls into, into shadow area there. So all those little details are really nice. Remember to add them when you're doing this because that's what makes it very interesting. Keep these nice and tall, almost up to the mountain really like that. Now after looking at the, the tree shape, the little, the dark part, I decided that I was going to need a little bit more detail in these trees. So the ones we raised up here already, I went ahead and just started touching them with the liner brush. And then I'll continue to raise up just the little tops using the liner only. Because because it's gonna give me better detail. And most of the shape is in here. Very little work needs to be done in order to add these detailed tops. So there you go, a little line, a little bit of dotting. Might take you a couple extra minutes, but it's definitely time well spent. Now with our three quarter flat brush and a nice little bit of black, blue, and red. Are you ready for this? Okay, here we go, right here. Oh man, we're gonna throw in a big, big, big evergreen tree. Definitely, definitely gonna give us another little plane in the painting. There, another layer in the painting, and which is exactly what we need. That's what makes our painting so exciting. Multiple layers. All right, well, once it's in, it's in. Just work with it. You can adjust the shape a little bit, but remember, don't let it grow on you too much. Pretty soon you'll have a tree that's three inches wide, and we don't want that today. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching.